Yes, everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm in a hotel room because obviously we've got things to do in the morning. Uh, but I'm here and Ronaldo's here as well. Um, obviously, we've just seen the back end there of part two of Cristiano Ronaldo's shit show with Piers Morgan. And I'm going to be honest, they leaked all the good stuff already. All of the good stuff was already out there. Um, it was a lot of fluff. I saw a lot of Piers Morgan kind of um, teeing up little underarm shots for Ronaldo to throw at different people. I saw Piers Morgan um, with his tongue so far up Cristiano Ronaldo's ass, I thought it could have come out of his mouth. Um, I, honestly, I felt a little bit sick at times watching um the pandering to it it wasn't an interview it wasn't um in any way shape or form a to and fro it certainly wasn't an, it was never going to be an attack piece but it wasn't even honest when you sit there and interview people for me if someone's got good things and bad things to talk about i will talk about the good things and i will talk about the bad things and i will try to cover those sorts of things um and you always want to be fair. I think that's fair enough, right? But there wasn't one point Piers criticised Cristiano Ronaldo or even asked him a tough question where, well, Cristiano, do you not think you have acted out of order here in any way, shape or form? And it was just a case of almost like, do you know what it reminded me of? It was like, you see the kids at school when they get in trouble because they answered back to the teacher. And then the parents come in and they're like, why are you talking to my son like that? It felt like one of them things. Now, if that had been me, if I'd have back chatted a teacher, I'm getting fucking one arrowed off me old man. Um, and it felt like that was just this little spoilt brat vibe was coming from it. And Piers Morgan, because he's a fucking dripping little snake, just sort of pandered to that in a massive way, I thought. I didn't think that there was any attempt whatsoever at an investigation into any of these things. Like I've said, like the loss of a child is heartbreaking. And I, I believe he maybe should have been given some time off at that point, And perhaps even looked at some therapy at that point. With his, his daughter being ill, I will always take that at the face value and say, I will believe you because I would never want to accuse you of lying and, and be wrong. So I will always hold my hands up and say, that's that. Now, he goes on to mention that some players were signed and didn't quite need the same preseason that he seemed to have to go through. Those players came in and, and played well. M not necessarily immediately, but some of those were played and, and dripped into the team and, and have come in and out of the team. Casemiro, though, was um, someone that didn't come into the team because he missed preseason. And whether Ronaldo likes it or not, he's talking about what can I do in three minutes? He's got a point. But also, mate, you've had 90 minutes and done jack shit in the 90 minutes as well. So saying what could I do in the three minutes, yeah, you, you might have somewhat of a point. But when you've been given the opportunity, and he had been given the opportunity, back-to-back -back starts... It wasn't just that he was lacking goals, because you can have a good performance and lack goals. He was doing nothing. Yo, and the metrics of Cristiano Ronaldo in the team versus Cristiano Ronaldo out of the team are staggering. And there isn't a single person in the world that would argue for him continually. Put it this way, he's lost his place to an injured player. Anthony Martial is injured and being preferred over him. Now, do you genuinely believe Eric Ten Hag hasn't given Cristiano Ronaldo the opportunity? That he hasn't paid the correct sort of respect levels to him? Because I do. I saw a manager that made him captain. I saw a manager... Here's the other thing, right? Cristiano claimed that he didn't get the support during the summer with his um, daughter's illness. But he actually thanked the club for their support at the time as well. So it's kind of like... Well, what happened here, mate? Because you've contradicted yourself here, not just once in this interview, but probably six or seven times throughout this interview. Do you know what I mean? 
Ravi here says, try working for a company with a toxic culture and negativity towards you and let's see your performance as an employee. Ravi, can you please explain to me what negativity you think that there was from Manchester United towards Cristiano Ronaldo as a, as a hierarchy? He says that they tried to kick him out and that they also didn't let him leave. They both can't be correct. Uh, Peter says his whole career he's been the main character and he's never been spoken down to. Now at the end of the career, he's not used to it and wants the limelight. That, I believe, is closer to the truth. Uh, Brian says this interview is the perfect analogy for PR7's interview. All hype and nothing to follow it up. It's firm, but it's fair. Uh, JXTXM says, am I going to make it to Qatar? Love the content. Um, yes. Um, my visa actually got approved um, about two hours ago. I think something like that. So yes, we are we are doing it. So I can breathe easy a little bit. I got the train down to London, and it was kind of like, am I getting the train back home tomorrow? But it's been cleared up. So all being well when we wake up tomorrow, we are on the way. Um, Pete says ninety minutes of his opinion, no facts, and no one is the villain in their own story. I'd agree with that. But also, not only that, Piers Morgan. In terms of an interview, he might as well have sat on the same side of a table as him and, and said, this is our statement. And for someone who's had a go at ex-teammates, and honestly, the Wayne Rooney, calling Wayne Rooney a rat, I just think that's, I just think it's out of order. You know, this is a guy that's demanding respect from all and sundry, yet throwing shade at the current manager. And Sir Alex Ferguson, who he adores, is the author of the statement when a player thinks he's bigger than the club, it's time to go. So I cannot believe Sir Alex Ferguson is out there going, you tell him, Chris. I don't think that's happening. Uh, David Briscoe says, can you get Rio to let us know, Americans know, when tipping point is available on this side of the pond? It isn't right now. I will ask. I wasn't aware it wasn't. Uh, John says, Piers just led him up whichever garden path he wanted to. Yeah, it was it was almost like they'd sat down and agreed a script. It, it didn't feel like a genuine interview. Not even the sort of shit you see on, on Oprah was like this. Uh, Notch says, some of what Ronaldo said was indicating that he's deliberately not tried this season for United, which is unacceptable. Yeah. Um, and and so, many, so many United fans, so little United fans, says the Babylon burner. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And I think um, one thing I would say is the statement that he says, United fans love me. I think you've underestimated how angry you've made some United fans with this. And for everyone trying to justify this opinion, saying, oh, he's, he's made everyone aware of the issues in the infrastructure and the issues with the Glazers. Well, I don't really know what to say to you. Like, we as a fan base got a game called off that was Manchester United versus Liverpool. If you don't think that brought world attention to what was going on, nothing will bring world attention to what is going on. Proper Giza says he loves the fans, but he loves the half a million more. Anthony says, who are the dudes that wanted to sign him? Yeah, that was another thing where he says there's loads of clubs that want to sign me. Okay, it does sound like the owner of Chelsea wanted to sign you, but Tommy Tuchel didn't. Maybe they'll come back in in January. Um, when he talks about the clubs that want to sign him, he definitely tried to leave in the summer. So if he did try to leave in the summer, what stopped you if you had all of these clubs lining up to see you? Um... David says Glazers probably still won't let go. Genuinely, I think it was the Glazers that prevented him from leaving in the summer. I think that's probably got a lot of truth in it. Um, I don't think Ten Hag give a fuck either way, to be honest, uh, which has been shown in the way that he's not been starting him when he's been available. Rahan says, Steve, the problem is that Ten Hag doesn't want him as the main man and CR7 has always been the main man. Both have big egos and this isn't working. I'm not sure necessarily sure Ten Hag does have a big ego. I think he's definitely the boss, and I think he also has to be the boss. But Ten Hag has... I, I honestly think Ten Hag's treated him fairly. 
They allowed him to miss preseason and deal with his family issues. Then when he came back, he said, I don't think you're fit enough. So you're going to have to work yourself into the team. When he's been given an opportunity in the team, he has not performed. Players have performed. Therefore, those players are getting an opportunity. Piers Morgan should have said to him, Cristiano, do you believe some players should just be picked on their reputation rather than their actual ability that they're putting on the field? Cristiano, he might have answered that honestly. He might not have done. He might have just said, yeah, I think I've done enough in my career to just think that I get to start games. And that might be a fine thing for him to say. But then there's a follow-up question. Okay, well, how many games does that last for? Because it's not indefinite. It isn't a 1,000 games of being shit after 890 games of being brilliant. It isn't that. Is it 100 games? I doubt you get to 100 games. Is it 75? 50? Is it 20? 20 games is four months. You don't get four months of being shit. In my opinion. Rye says he didn't say the club believe him about his daughter. He said he felt like they didn't believe him. It's an interesting conundrum, I guess. I might have to plug my phone in here because uh, it looks like the phone is, is running out. Um, and I'm, I'm going live through my phone. Um, Robert says, if he leaves and we don't replace him, do you think we can make top four? No, we absolutely need to um, to bring somebody in. Diego says, can't imagine the bubble he's in with his stature that distorts reality. That's a good point. Anyone can feel for him, but he's... I think it's a hit delusion. I think he means a bit delusional. Great player, but respect is earned by your current behaviour, not your past. I think I would agree with, with all of that. Um, Anthony with a super chat says, knew that's what was going on. Ten Hag is different to CR7 behind closed doors and in his conferences. I would have been annoyed if I was him, RE preseason. Annoyed with who? Graham Souness has invented some conversations and promises that Ten Hag had with him, um, where he says promises have not been kept what promise do you believe ten Hag could have made him that has not been followed up he's played games this is a two-way street here you have to perform that's the that's the only thing that's allowed doran says seriously what manager will want to manage him now he's basically said he's undroppable no matter what and that he is the manager knows best always um the problem is some owners will go right above their manager bring him in and just tell a manager to deal with it in actual fact i'm almost 99 percent sure that's what happened with ollie last summer with united i don't think there was a single um conversation with ollie i think the club just decided to act and bring him in and then figure it out uh, Film Fat Boy says Ian Wright spoke facts. I haven't seen what Ian Wright has said. Can someone link me to that, please, on Twitter, maybe? Um, Bobby says the absolute detachment from reality from Piers and Ronaldo asking, um, "Do you have more money than followers?" What the fuck is that all about? Anyone that I first really come across Piers Morgan when he was writing in one of the magazines, in I think the Times, maybe, or the Express, or some shit like that. And it was just this name drop diary where you're like, who even are you? I thought he was a fucking reporter. What do you report on? Someone needs to show Cristiano the fucking things that Piers Morgan has said about him because he doesn't respect you. He's using you for these fucking views and that's it. Uh, Paramount says, Ian Wright said that CR7 needs to understand how to manage his career at the end and needs professional help. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Jay says, the nerve of Ronaldo to say that he wants Arsenal to win the league. See, that just shows you all that this was. This was just a fucking mutual masturbation session. That's all it was. He's not. Do you think Ronaldo gives a fuck about Arsenal? No, he's sitting there with Piers Morgan. That was it. Uh, Darren says Ronaldo talking about toxic press when he's face to face with one of them, one of the most toxic, one of the most toxic, one of the most toxic that has written this shit exclusively for the fucking sun. You couldn't get more toxic. It's glowing. It's that toxic. David Flint, all the players got a fresh start with Ten Hag. Some never played so well. Ronaldo was not performed, but still expects to play the team over the player. Uh, Anthony says, this will definitely speed up the infrastructure upgrade. It might do. It might well do. Now, um, I'm led to believe that there are plans afoot for some upgrades at Carrington. To be honest, 
this is kind of what um, Rio was talking about the other day when he said the club could have communicated with this. I think he didn't get fully out what he meant to say. What he... What he kind of alluded to off camera is as soon as Ronaldo said, I'm going to go and do an interview, someone from the club should have been, excuse me, can I have a word? What's this interview that you're doing? Now, you might have got told to sling it. Ronaldo might have said, I'm not fucking talking to you. But you might have been able to sit down with him and go, what's the dramas? And he might have been honest and he might not have been honest. But at least you can sit down and you can talk to him. And if he's like, look, the infrastructure is shit, this is going on, this is going on, this is going on. If you as a club have got wind of what's going to be said, even from the pure PR perspective of this, United should have gone, anyway, we're announcing £100 million worth of upgrades to Carrington. You've just sweeped the legs out of him for, for half of this interview. That's what a good fucking team would have done. We know United are fucking struggling. We know United are rebuilding on the pitch and a fucking shambles of it off it. How many times have you heard me say Old Trafford needs a fucking karcher and a baby wipe? And the reason I say that is because Old Trafford needs a fucking karcher and a baby wipe. There's parts of Old Trafford that are fucking gross. Do you want me to tell you what the Glazers have upgraded? A little bit of the rail seating and the TRA. That's it. If you go look at a photograph of what Old Trafford looked like, the day they took over in 2005, the only difference you will find is that the north, um, east and west corners of the stands have been filled in. But do you know when that was authorised and paid for? 2004, before they came in. So you can easily make the case that there has been zero significant upgrades to Old Trafford since the Glazers joined. And we all know Casey Stoney fucking quit. Because she was treated like a second class citizen with her women's team. That they were based out of a porter cabin. We know this. There is nothing Cristiano Ronaldo said, apart from the fact he doesn't respect Ten Hag, which, did we not know that? There is nothing that he has come out and said that we didn't already know. We've had managers leaving because of it. We've had Lou Van Gaal, Jose Mourinho, and plenty of the players that have fucked off talk about how the club favours commercial over performance. He's not said anything we didn't fucking know. On that front. Why do you think there's been protests? Why do you think there's been fucking green and gold all over the fucking gaff? This is why. Nikan says, why does nobody in the UK want to talk about the situation in Iran? You're all playing us in Qatar. Um, is finding anyone who speaks about the protests in Iran? I wasn't aware that that was the case. I wasn't aware that that was the case. I saw some, I shared something on my story the other day and then got told that it was fake. But then you don't know what to believe is real. Dead Pixel says, how sickening is it listening to a billionaire complain about an old jacuzzi while the rest of us can't afford gas and a lucky? Um, Wayne says, you do as you're fucking told, why can't people get that? 500 grand a week, you'll play a minute if that's what the gaffer says. Yeah, no one's promised minutes. Jay Washington says, did you see Piers tweet about this is the most watched football interview of all time yeah that's what i always say to people S sometimes numbers aren't the thing to be proud of there'd probably be a hundred million times more people watch what peers has just produced versus what rio has just produced but one of them's likely to ha actually have impact in the game and one of them's a fucking beautiful piece of work that will last forever and ever one's a fucking might as well just fucking wanked him off sitting opposite him uh, Burn says Ten Hag always protecting his players in front of the press. He likes to do the same. Chew the players' heads off with no one around. It's the right way of handling it. Agree. Um, Breen says they painted it now. Yeah, sorry. I, apologies. They actually have painted it. They they got a two for one deal on some Dulux. Um, 
Nava says, if Maguire did this, not one fan would justify his reasoning for doing the interview. Ronaldo needs to understand you don't perform, you don't play. Yeah, the motive for all of this is huge and very, 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 very transparent. Uh, Richard says, still waiting for the explosive part of the interview. I, th- I th- Bad drills in all honesty. I, I think they've fucking shown you um, all of the best bits. Um, was leaked. I'm certain of it. Uh, Munza here says, what surprised me is how he used us uh, for a salary increase at Madrid, uh, but it took him to come here to know the antics. All the fans uh, know he's going on at Old Trafford. Yeah. Charlie says, what has Rio produced? The Tipping Point documentary, the three-parter. If you've not seen it, it's on Amazon Prime. Go, It's free on Amazon. Go watch it. Um, Tolu says, won't be surprised if the Glazers try and renovate Old Trafford. I fucking would, because it'd be very expensive. I'd be very surprised if they tried to do it, to be honest. Jack does everything, says, where does where do we think Ronaldo goes now? I'm almost certain he's gone. I don't fucking know where, though. I really don't fucking know where. Where does he go? JD and Coke. Do you know what? Let's talk about this, because it's a lot more interesting than the fucking jizzathon that we've just watched. Um... And I can't believe he's called Rooney a rat. I really can't. Um, did I see that Ganacho almost got called up for the Argentina squad? Unf- oh, unfortunately, they went with Almeida. Ah, oh, bastard. Yeah, I, do what, I saw the tweet saying that there's a possibility that they're going to call up Garnacho. And there we go. Chips pissed on. Bastard. Um, I've got some World Cup preview coming out soon. It's either tomorrow or um, Saturday. Keep an eye out for that. I go through all the way to the final where I'll tell you what I think is going to be happening. Um, Abhinav says, come on, ponytail, baldy face, terminate the contract. When do you think United act? Because everything's a game. Do United do it like the day before his first game, the day of his first game? Did it cause a bit of a fucking shitstorm for him in that sense? Uh, Amar says, didn't Richard Arnold appoint an architecture company to revamp Old Trafford, same ones that are doing the Real Madrid revamp? I don't know if they've been appointed. I did hear something about that. Uh, Lamin says, I think the rat's comment was out of order. Why was he, why is he throwing these jabs at Wayne Rooney? Like if this was a, like, look, I'm not happy with these things at Manchester United. I need to do better. Blah, blah, blah. Then I think a lot of people would have got behind the interview, but it was a whinge. It was a, like, uh, blah, 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 then fucking Rooney's getting a pace and this guy's getting a pace. And you know what I mean, what the fuck? Um, Abhinav says they're waiting if Portugal do bits in the World Cup. Um, Stephen says wouldn't pay a penny of the remainder of his contract. I think he's waiting on that. I mean, it's a lot of money. And I think any player would be advised to not just leave that money where it is. But he's got so much. Does it matter? If you want to go and play, why don't you fucking buy yourself out of your contract then, Mr. In Charge? I think the club should maybe... I think the club would come out with a fantastic statement like that, where Ronaldo's talked about how he wants to be a role model for the youngsters. Say, okay, listen, Cristiano, we acknowledge some of your comments that the infrastructure of the club could be better. We're going to make a concerted effort to improve those um, parts of the club, and we welcome your input into the future of the infrastructure and... We would welcome, Cristiano, the opportunity for you to guide the next generation of Manchester United Academy graduates by playing in the under-23s for the remainder of your contract this season. I think that would be a fucking brilliant thing to do with him. Uh, Jack says, would there be grounds or principle for the club to see out his contracts in the 23s? Oh, yeah, like I just said. You do what the fuck you want with him. He's your player. He's under contract to play football for you. You're playing football, mate, but it's on a Friday night, and it's in Hartlepool. Um... Is there grounds for sacking? Maybe. Um, Zay Talk say, did he make one talk, uh, one point about his own performance? No. He did nothing of the sort. Ryan O'Sullivan says, we got YouTube boxing now. Is it time for professional football boxing? Let's make it happen. CR7 versus Waza. And he says, wow, I hope someone from the club watches this and copy and paste it. We fucking know they watch. Hello, everyone. Make sure to subscribe. Thank you. Um, that'd be good if they did that, wouldn't it? 
Um, Peter says anything to stop him scoring Champions League goals because that's the only record that he cares about. Um, Suki says vote Steve for all future United communications. Listen, you'll know if I get the job because official communications from the club will include the word widge a thousand percent more than they ever have done in the past, which means once. Um, Santa says the man who brought him back, Ed Woodward, hasn't wasn't mentioned once. Uh, Dead Pixel, imagine blaming the manager for picking players who are playing well. He doesn't care about how the team's doing, he just wants to be picked. Do I think Garnacho's allegiance with CR7 has cost him? I don't think so. Uh, Tom says, arrogance on another level, uh, which was encouraged by a clown. Uh, how's the room? Uh, well, we got here and the guy was like, we got you a single bed. Luckily, it's a double. Ronaldo's about two doors down, I think. Um, it's all right, I guess. This is an old hotel list. I thought it was a fairly new hotel, but it seems like an old hotel. Uh, Abdul says, I actually have some sympathy and feel sorry for him. Listen, I've got all the sympathy for him losing a child. Jesus Christ. Th there's not a person on this world that could lose a child that wouldn't have my sympathy. Um, he absolutely has my sympathy for that. Um, but the sympathy for some of the things that he's come out and said tonight just isn't there. I think some of the things he said tonight are fucking out of order. Uh, Knight says, I'm in Qatar. No, I'm in a, li a lovely little hamlet called Heathrow at the moment. I fly tomorrow afternoon. Um, Ragav says, do I think United should just take a hit and cut him, give him what he wants? No, I, I think the best thing to do um, with him would be, like I said, put him in a 23s. If he really, really wants to get out, he'll buy himself out of his contract. Or he'll say, well, what about a mutual termination? The club shouldn't have to pay to fuck him off. I mean, um, our cap says you guys sure know about the performance. Where will you guys hide if you perform like four months ago? He wasn't performing four months ago. He wasn't performing eight months ago. He had a shocking second half to the season. He had some good performances in the first half of the season, but not in the second half. Com says the visa sorted. Yes, we finally got the visa sorted. And I don't know if I'm going to fuck myself up here, but they, the visa has come. It comes digitally. It's come with a photo that they rejected. I had to upload three different photos, right? They've... <laughs> <laughs> they've eventually accepted it with a photograph that they actually rejected, but fuck it. I've got it I've got it on the app and I've got the PDF for it as well. That's what I need to do. I need to go and speak to downstairs at the hotel, see if they can print something off for me. Jobs are good and um Arkadip says match against Tottenham is in the second half of the season. One fucking game for a player of Cristiano Ronaldo's stature is not enough, mate. Jesus fucking Christ. Half a million a week for that. Fucking hell. Um, have I watched the new R9 documentary? No, I was busy last night, so I've not had the opportunity to go see that one just yet. Uh, Notch says they, they're not going to accept a photo of you screaming at Paddock players. Um, it was just a white background one with my fucking face. I, I look like a convict on it, but it is what it is. Qatar visa system sounds promising. Well, I've got mine, so fuck it. Um, Starfish says, can't wait to see the World Cup stuff. I'm looking forward to seeing what we're going to do. Um, because... It's been so hard to plan stuff. Um, we'll we'll see how it goes, won't we? Uh, Brian says he simply needs to go ASAP. Ross says 21 will come under Ten Hag. Um, Mike says have an amazing time. I intend to, mate. Thank you. Um, how does this affect our youngsters? Don't know. Any other lads from Paddock coming along? No. Um... Tom says, why do I have a feeling Sir Alex is going to defend Ronaldo? Well, I did say on Monday when I was with Rio, I'd love to know what Sir Alex Ferguson thinks. He's the man that said, um, as soon as you think you're bigger than the club or the manager, you've got to go. And that was a man that let go some players at their peak. Ronaldo is not that at the moment. Now, he might have an affection for him, and I think Fergie definitely had a bit of a blind spot for um, Neville and Giggs and Scholes towards the back end of their careers. Um, and I'm not criticising him for that. I totally understand it. But I think there was a blind spot there. I think we can be honest and admit that. Um, he wasn't perfect. He's just the greatest. 
Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's got a blind spot with Ronaldo as well. Arkadip, fucking hell, mate. He's not going to shag you. What about Rashford's performance in the whole of last season? What about Rashford's performance in the whole of last season? You mean the whole of last season where he was completely and utterly panned and criticised by almost every single facet of the fan base? Are you talking about that? What fucking relevance does that have to the fact that Cristiano Ronaldo has stunk the place out this season and has now stunk it out even more with his interview with this fucking leech of a man? YouTube says Ronaldo is a 700 gold machine. You think he wants to sit on benches? Listen, mate, at one point Bobby Charlton was that. When it's your time, it's your fucking time. Com says we sacked George Best back in the day. Boom. Um, Ankesh says the difference is Marcus is not giving interviews to that rap peers. Um, and not pretty much backs out and says he hasn't done a tell-all slag fest with Piers Morgan. Yeah, he's not disrespected the manager, for starters. Steve says the R9 film is fucking brilliant. Is there any way I watch it online? I might fucking watch it tonight. Um, Dead Pixel said Messi sat on the PSBG bench and didn't say a word, so did Zlatan. Hmm. Am I a happy boy? I am a happy boy at the moment. Yeah, I've had a stressful day, but we got it in the end. Joe, the only thing that I didn't remember when i was packing one thing my fucking running trainers so i had to nip out into town today and get some running trainers lee says it's on bbc iplayer isn't it on channel four bbc four anyone what the r9 thing is it on iplayer or is it on channel four i thought it was on uh, channel four bbc four someone else said bbc four i'm gonna assume it's bbc four then righty then we're watching it on iplayer tonight then aren't we um AJ says, what's Rio saying? And I'm, am I in Qatar? No, I am still in Heathrow. Um, we go tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Gino says, have I seen the tweet about Qatar paying off Ecuador players for the first game? Who was the guy that reported that? That's mental if that's the case, In it? I, I imagine we're going to hear a lot about that in the next 24 hours. Um, but do I have a TV license? Of course I have a TV license. Um, Mary Rick says do I think Ronaldo used the Glazers to win sympathy with the fans yes and I imagine Piers Morgan probably said to him give the Glazers a pasting while you're doing everybody else it'll probably get some fans on side am I going on a private jet am I fuck going on a private jet <laughs> uh, Rob says his comment about his kid asking how United are going to punish him was bollocks yeah um Ash says the club haven't progressed in terms of their training facilities, tech and stadia. That's obvious, but he's been public with the criticism, which is not acceptable. I don't even think I'm not even thinking the, the criticism of the infrastructure is unacceptable, to be honest. I just question the motive of why you're doing it. In fact, no, I don't question the motive. I know exactly the motive. Um, and I think he's trying to get sacked. I, honestly, I think Roy Keane giving uh doing his job which is you're asked to analyze the game you ask roy Keane to analyze the game when you're terrible what do you expect roy Keane to do he's gonna go this was terrible because that's what roy Keane does so you can't get mad at roy Keane when roy Keane plays roy Keane and the team has been terrible and he plays the honest Roy Keane role of telling everyone that that wasn't good enough. Roy Keane got sacked for that. And I've spoken to a few of the players that was in the room at the time who go, it was nothing worse than he would say to your face, <laughs> which is what you got to love about Roy Keane, isn't it? It was like, some of the players go, well, he's actually said worse to my face. So Roy Keane got sacked for that. Uh, Harry Hunter says, House and back the Glazers and accuse other fans of trying to create a toxic atmosphere at the club. Now he's against them. Mate, what have you been sniffing? I mean, that's just provably bollocks, isn't it? You all right, lad? Andrew says, yeah, he wants to get sacked so we can force him to... So I would say force him to keep his contracts. Yeah. Uh, Rock says, have a safe flight out. Looking forward to the contents. Thank you, brother. Um, Manu, Nanu says, Roy Keane didn't shit on skulls and gigs. No, he didn't. Um... 
he did criticize players, but like in the context of he was asked to give his opinion on a game that was terrible. And he fucking gave real paste in, didn't he? <laughs> you have one fucking good game against Tottenham and you think you've arrived. What a fucking line. Do you know what? I wish someone would give you the true, like, give me the top 25 Roy Keane insults because they're fucking brilliant. I, I love a Roy Keane story. I hope he's out there and I get a chance to meet him. Uh, one, I'm going to bore him to death about rugby league because I know he loves his rugby league. And then two, I'm just, I'm just want to, I just want to talk to him and not annoy him. That would be, a, that's going to be difficult because I'm probably going to annoy him. But I'd love to talk to him and not annoy him. And I love a Roy Keane story. Everyone's got a fucking brilliant Roy Keane story. The Jesper Blomquist one. Now, everyone knows the Dwight York one. Dwight York walks out into the pitch, big fucking happy, stupid Dwight York face. He smashes a ball at him from five yard and goes, Cantona would have fucking controlled that. Yeah, welcome to the club. Not hello, anything like that. Just fucking bosh. And then um, Jesper Blomquist arrives. Same summer. He fucking blasts the ball at him. And you can imagine Roy Keane just fucking shooting it at him. Um, <laughs> and it fucking cannons off his shin. And he just turns around and he goes, five million for that shit. While the guy's there. I love a Roy Keane story. I wish my team had a Roy Keane in it. I was just raising the standards like that and just fucking threatening everybody. I think you need that sometimes. Uh, Peter says, will I be looking for another coach in the future for Paddock if the team progresses up the ladder or are you looking to go pro in management? No, I'm not looking to go pro in management. Um, Charge Wood says, I'm here for the Ronaldo Aquarium video, just about to become a member for it. We are taking Ronaldo to the Caterium, so make sure to check for that one. Um, Mick McCarthy, call yourself a professional. Is that what he said to Mick McCarthy? Um, look up the Gerard PK and Roy Keane story. Oh, I don't know if I've seen that one. Um, anyway, I'm going to ride. Cheers for tuning in as always. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to become a member or a patron to get some of the extra content for the fucking plans I've got for Ronaldo, um, then go ahead. Otherwise, take it easy. There's content coming out all the way through um, and some match reactions and all that lot. And we've got some very, very, very special stuff lined up for you with uh, five. So make sure to check that out as well. And I'll see you lot in the next one. Laters. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.